I'm okay, right? Yeah. Hello, and welcome to uh, Jess Calvin. I am here with uh, Hank for U.S. Senate, who is running as a Green Party in the state of California. Uh, first, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Calvin. And you're doing okay? I'm doing pretty good. No big deal on my, on my uh, side of things. So uh, you're running on the Green Party uh, platform, which, uh, what does that entail? Um, the Green Party platform uh, right now uh, is a party that is very strong with social uh, 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 issues when it comes to justices, uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, they, they, they are really, uh, they're, they're very progressive in those ways. Um, but, but they also have the deep roots in the environment. And, um, and, and, it's, and, 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 that's, and that's the modern uh, party. Uh, when you look at uh, people, they're, they're, if you look at people, there there's some that are strong on the uh, democratic socialist side uh, that you'll see. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, we're talking about uh, eco-socialism now, um, which is, I think, is a, is a just kind of a, it's not a coincidence that we have the democratic socialists, uh, but then and the union side, and, and then but then you have the older side uh, that really is totally uh, anti-corporation and feels that even when dealing with uh, corporations in the form of a union, it's unacceptable because really, uh, I'm or, you know I'm kind of like that. I've got nothing against a corporation except when it stands on my way for my goals to save the environment. Mm -hmm. And that is to me, the Green Party. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, now, first of all, how, how's the campaign going? Uh, you know, about as expected. And um, where I, I'm really happy now. Um, I, I, have, I, have, I have benchmarks I wanted to reach, um, you know, uh, and they were in, over time. I've uh, you know filed with the FEC. I've got a tax ID. I'm getting. I'm collecting uh, um, donations. Uh, my website's working really well, and you know, I so it's it's kind of pre-work. Um, mm. and, and about four to five weeks is when they're going to release the. Uh, it's going to be when we're, we're going to be able to go out and get signatures. I'm going to get about 200 signatures of registered voters in California. Get me on the ballot and and get and come up with you know about two thousand dollars more, and then I'm on the ballot. Mm. And, and then uh, and then the election starts. And uh, we're uh, if they want to sign if they want to sign the can they sign it about online? I have to check into that. It's been about three years since I ran. Um, before you could not, um, but that was three years ago mm. when I ran. So I got a that's a good idea about whether or not the pandemic. But I would not want to because I I do much better than just sh shaking hands. I really no, no, enjoy I, talking to people. No, I know. Do, I'm, but, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm referring to like if oh, people, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll check. I'll check and see. I'll okay. check and see. I, you know, uh, you, if, if you got to collect 200 signatures, really, you, you collect about 400 because a lot of people don't even know it. Not even a lot of people think that they're registered to vote and on the record on goes to this and it goes to the check in and then they're not. So no, to know, but that comes up a lot. Yeah. So, yes. So, okay. Uh, and uh, who is the opponent that, that you and I'm assuming there are other people running? Uh, who, who is the person you guys are trying to unseat? Well, Alex Padilla is the person that's been appointed by uh, Gavin Newsom to be the uh, U.S. Senator for us right now. That, that's, he's, up, he's up for election. Um, he replaced uh, Kamala Harris, uh, B, the VP, current VP. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it, it's, and, and, and man, he's got money. <laughs> Let me just pause there. He's like, uh, you, it's the same thing when you go against the juggernauts. Don't be surprised too too much before the election even starts. Uh, you know the guy's got I think like uh, four million, four point five million dollars. Mm. Um, you know he's got he's got he's got the endorsement already. So the big the big endorsements, the ones that come with you know uh, you know printing fees and, and in kind donations and and all those great things, those have already been doled out to the to uh, people like Alex Padilla. So they're they're not they're not even they're not even uh, an audience. Well, I mean, we saw what happened in uh, with the, I keep want to say Georgia. Uh, was it Georgia? Uh, that uh, the uh, the Republican won that uh, governorship. Was it Georgia or did, do I have I think, a different place? I thought it was you know just two days ago Virginia. 
Virginia, I'm sorry. Yeah, Virginia. I don't know why I keep thinking Georgia. But anyway, uh, okay. no, uh, that, their, their Democrat uh, had well, Harris and Biden and all of them come down and endorse him and stump for him, and he still lost. So if they come down and uh, stump for this one, that holds pretty good for you in regards to that because they are pretty much un unpopular in regards to uh, the country itself, as far as polls, I mean. It's a good time to be a green and it's a good time to say I've been a registered green party for 30 years. Um, yeah. You know, it, 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 the green party has gone through the, the, the rent cycle a few times. Oh, yeah. uh, first, there were, you know, the, there was the Ross Perot days where they, they wanted to lynch third parties because, uh, you know, Ross, that darn Ross Perot. Uh, then, then, you know, it, it, then slowly it's always been, oh, you, if, if, you, if you want to throw away your vote, if you want the other guy to win, um, it's never, it's always been like a, 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 a just a, a, a chip in the, in the game of a bigger party, but, uh, or, um, fight, fight between two parties, but never really, uh, realistic. Yeah. But, uh, uh, the elections came out and, and, uh, I think 16 greens won yesterday. I think, yeah, there was a city council green and, uh, you know, it, it you know, you, you have, it, it's, it's being acknowledged. Uh, as a party that's not a throwaway vote, people are winning and they're saying I'm green uh, out loud and, and, uh, and, you know, people care about this stuff. Yeah. Well, so far right now, from what I've been reading, uh, 94 current uh, Green Party uh, activists and members hold office. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that fantastic for, well, I don't know how you are, but it is fantastic to me, I, you know, uh, to me because um, uh, it's a double-edged sword again. You know, the worst thing about being green is you don't get any big donations, mm -hmm. corporate donations. Yeah. You know, you look at the, you know, with, with the with the wand by Microsoft, uh, someone can get into U.S. Congress under the Green yeah. Party. Uh, no, that's true. But then again, you know, who wants it? Because then you got someone who owes some, owes everything to Microsoft. So all, every green that's out there, think about it's 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 all because someone like you and I, you know, instead of watching TV, we decided to do these things and and see if they come something comes out of it, and they did. So it, it's 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 a it's about a dream for these people. It's about wanting to make the world a better place, and it's and it's not you know it's not it's not the fact that they wanted a political life. They just want to do something fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, in, in, in my case, uh, I decided uh, to not vote. Uh, I, I said on my show that I would not vote until one, there's ranked choice voting and there's open primaries and the Green Party were able to be in it. So oh. I, to my word, I did not even attempt to vote uh, uh, yesterday or even early voting. Uh, so th that's how I'm doing as far as the part goes. I'm also trying to, going to try to help uh, other parties get on the ballot not just the green party uh, because i do want to have a total democracy not not just one party get on the ballot but every party that's not on the ballot should be on the ballot give people right. more choices so um that california is isn't california one of those states where you have multiple multiple parties being able to get on there or am i wrong about that um we just have an open election so it's just uh it, okay it's uh yeah it's uh, well that's that's uh as far then, as, as, then, far as then, I can see. the top the top two go the top top two do the runoff um you know it's really not it's it's really about me about uh finding a way to get parties federal funding mm -hmm. um like they, they keep on pushing back uh federal funding for uh the parties um you know specifically like being on pbs or you know, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 they should have equal time on public uh, news. Um, yeah. Billions of dollars goes into elections and it's all managed by corporations. And so it's a it's a process about whether or not you get scandal and people give you watches. So these sponsors are happy, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not about having a plurality of vote voice, an equal vote voice. You know, I, I'm not. You know, it's there. There's so many resources that is just uh, squashed away, and our voices are squashed. E even if, uh, even if a God, God forbid, a libertarian ugh, should get get six percent, you know, they 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 they're, they're a big party. And then then you know then then instead of having you know these people back and forth back and forth with these two people, you you add a third element, and then you have a triangulation 
And then you mm -hmm. have people, you know, these two, these two undermining this person, these, this, these two overrunning the person, and you have, and you have this openness of, of, of compromise uh, uh, between three parties, right? And there, and there's so little compromise between two. Yeah. The more you have a party, psychologically speaking, if you get into a conversation about having more people having a relationship, the, the more compromise they make, the more open the relationship is. Of course, that that's, it benefits in the United States. Yeah. Well, as far as like the current um, build back better uh, or build back kind of better uh, uh, legislation that is being um, formatted or for anyway being form formed, I suppose. Uh, what what legislation would you want to be to be put in there? Oh my gosh, that's such a big question for me. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 weird because. Um, if, if you talk to me, uh, uh, if, if you, even online, I, I, I always throw out the, these uh, U.S. Senate economic uh, graphs that show that since 2010 to now, all the cuts that have made to non-military departments, including the IRS, including you know uh, a housing justice, and all these and all these parts got severe cuts under Obama and under Trump, of course. But everybody thinks that that we took the big hit economically. What, from those seven hundred fifty billion dollar bailouts that we forced uh, that we forced the loans the, the banks to take the loans and that that was the big thing that bailed us out. Mm. But it, but but it, but if that's true, why over ten years did you see uh, the trillions of dollars cut from non military expenditures? And if and 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 when they came out the jobs plan, they uh, it, in the second paragraph it says that America took it hard. Um, because of the 2010 ex uh, non-military expenditures hitting, you know, communities, uh, jails, all, you know, and, and I was a deep, deep hit. And, and, and it's written by Biden's administration. And Biden was the, Biden's administration was the one in there making those cuts. You know, yeah. it's like a bully coming up and going, you know, beating the hell out, heck out of you. And then, and then uh, 20 minutes later going, wow, you got a lot of bruises there, buddy. Right. And, and 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 so now we're and now we have these dilapidated communities, uh, you know, that just uh, just just it's been a slow burn of twelve years, right? And now they and now they instead of like you know turning the, the taps back on for these departments, um, they, they're they're going to have these heroic plans, you know, a metaphor. I hate dealing with metaphors, but metaphors is like you know you get a new boss mm -hmm. and they come in and like oh your old boss got fired, you got a new boss and they're like oh I've got PowerPoints, I'm gonna redo you this way, I'm gonna do it this way, you're gonna do it my way. And I'm like oh my god, I've been doing the same job for two years, right? Why mm -hmm. do we have to redo it? It's like oh but I'm new. It's like there's always the cowboy, so the cowboy gets liked. Uh, so why? So if you look at so we've looked at this twelve years of of, of budget cuts and that's huge budget cuts. Uh, that legislature that you talk about, you know, who, how, how are you going to rewrite new budget legislator? I'm not that cowboy. I'm going to go, well, I, you know, what I would do is I re rework the, the, the tax system and blah, blah, blah. But look at what, you know, turn the tabs back on. So, so that's what, and, and that's what they're afraid to do. Uh, um, right. And, yeah, so, and that's so... why social security stuck at $750 to $1,500 a month for seniors. Because they turn they they turn the taps back off, off they turn the taps off and the seniors, uh, you know that they're and then and minimum wage and everything got stuck, and 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 then ten years the economy grew, out came the Amazons, out came these huge corporations, why everything on every level just got stagnated. So it, it, I mean let's let's talk about that. I'm not a uh, uh, I'm not a uh, great person to write legislation, but I will. I do. I do know a lot of stuff, and and it's convincing. It's like the smoking gun. So let let. But let's talk about something interesting. Uh, uh, I I build a campaign. My platform is on my website, and what they are are is basic talking points. Uh, which people can have conversations, right? Uh -huh. So then, there, and then there's an edge to them, and, and and each one of them is like, well, there's an argument there, and one of them is is about banks and racism, mm -hmm. right? Uh, um, and I'm going to be 
if you if 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 you took somebody that's paying a thousand dollars a month in rent mm -hmm. and that was just to pay off a house not the interest anything else no. to pay off a house mm -hmm. over 30 years they can buy up to like a half a million dollar house the reason that a person can't do it that way is because the bank has to lend money and the bank has to get the profit off that loan yeah uh reserves they they uh they basically uh the person who goes for the loan gets approved for a certain amount if the mm -hmm. bank does not have the cash on hand to deposit that they then call into the bank because inner is inner bank or uh, yeah in inner bank system and, loans. Let, and, let, and let's let's put that under the umbrella of capitalism right uh, that's under the umbrella of capitalism and how capitalism manages housing. Now, what we know about African Americans, people that are black, people that are ex-slaves, uh, people, if, if you look at the history from the 1860s to now about how again and again, because of sharecropping, because of redlining, because of all these things, mm -hmm. white people got stuff and black people didn't. And through uh, years uh, of, of programs for the whites in which it was like, oh, okay, well, we don't mind not making a profit if it's for the whites, but to keep the mm -hmm. black people down. So, all right. So if I said to you, all right, uh, let's, let's uh, repair, not, not, not in my relationship with black people. I don't want to ask for the forgiveness, but let's repair where they are economically in our community and say, okay, what if we as a, go uh, as a government uh, creates a program where people, uh, decided by Howard University or the NAACP, uh, their appointees, and they're gonna decide who gets these loans uh, like that. Uh-huh, okay. Right? Now, first of all, that's what I propose. No money down, you look at it, you just look at everybody, you look at people that, that somebody decides in this way and they pay, would pay less than they are for rent, the average person on that mortgage, they're, they're paid less than they are for rent and they would be able to get a 30 year loan and have housing. And property and housing equals power when you go down the mayor, when you go down the city council. If you're just a renter and you're just some person renting, but if you go down there, I am a homeowner, I'm going down to the mayor and I say, I, the school board, I don't like the way that you're treating children from, from this, color, this, this community of color. Then they say, oh, well, that's a homeowner, I'm gonna listen to you. So that is given power, economy from, and saying, I'm gonna take people from this umbrella of capitalism and put them over here. Why can't we do something like that? So it sounds like you kind of wanted to give uh, uh, organizations like the uh, ACL, ACLU and other, was ACLU, I'm stupid, I'm sorry. Uh, NAA, like the NAACP is the National Association of colored people i hate this like kind of it's a dated thing there's also yeah. like look at howard university you got a lot of people no I, I, howard I, university holds I, holds this holds a think tank and knowledge of of, of uh, history that you know that's specialized and, and, and to empower this kind of community right uh are you are you saying that they that those places should have the power to uh uh loan out loans to the african-american uh community to at a lower uh at a lower fee than say the bank would do i'm saying that as a government we should have we should acknowledge that we have we have an economic divide between communities of color and white people uh -huh. that the government did that it wasn't just by chance nobody was lazy the government yeah. did that mm -hmm. and the government and, and, and it's really hurting our nation because uh, as long as there is that economic divide, it's huge. Uh, you really can't do anything about Black Lives Matter. You really can't do a lot of things that we, we, we want to live in a world where we don't need Black Lives Matter, but we can't have that until we start address the big issue is just poverty, uh, uh, people being born into poverty because of the color of the skin. If you correct that, that's where it's gotta stand. So that's what I'm saying is that the government should, should, should say, I'm gonna give out loans, not with Citibank or else the government and, and, the, and the people are gonna run that government program and decide who's gonna like run that government program is gonna be appointed by intellectuals from, from within the black community. That we just, and, and so white people say, this is, your, this is the program. You, it's like, even if it goes bad to a certain extent, the, the, the wholeness of the program to correct 
uh, that would be huge. I thought that the bank test are to uh, uh, give leniency to those that were maybe uh, lower in regards to uh, income, but enabling them to take out a home loan uh, for a lesser regards that dependent on the income they get. I thought they, right, well, I, thought they had... I say free of profit, free of profit. Here's an example of free or profit. If you buy a house and you and you put less than 20% down, you have to pay insurance, mortgage mm -hmm. insurance, right? Like five hundred dollars a month, six hundred dollars. Yeah, month. like a, like a, more, a mortgage backed security. And then once and then once you pay off 20%, you don't have to pay that anymore because you don't have equity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's there's but you know most people will pay that off, and that mortgage insurance that you're paying for five or six hundred dollars a month rarely comes into use and is and is not, it's like I would gamble that most of the time it's just profit for the mortgage companies. Oh yeah, and then uh, that would be reverse mortgage, right? Uh, or so. So I, I well, again, let's just go right back to the skinny, which is just give out home loans, no interest down, no interest, no money down, right? No taxes to people that you whose lineage whose community is goes back deeply in our country uh, and uh, and give and give people a chance to own a home at less money less monthly payments than rent and if that's possible think about what that would mean yeah it's actually 10 percent of the community right I, then, I, then I, I, I i think uh i think banks had a has started doing that or some similar to that uh uh when Biden first got, got in I, I i used to uh i used to read off uh off of the uh the fed website as far as like new stuff they were doing or implementing i have done mm -hmm. in a while so I, I may i may be off as far as they have pulled back on that or not but last i checked they uh that they had uh taken down uh some of the requirements or the uh yeah for strictly uh, for strictly government loans for for housing and, and, and it, but it should be just strictly a kind of reverse of like where this is that there's this huge economic divide. How do you do that? And 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 I think that that I'm a I I don't I I can't affect culture that's that's been made today through history. But um, but I, I'm saying look let, let's like go at it with teeth economically about giving uh, uh, these kind of. Uh, no loans about giving uh, um, chances to have businesses that are owned in the black community, but by the black community, um, and 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 we know that capitalism is racism is is the power to racism, mm -hmm. and I can talk about that for hours, and so should you. So um, why do we need the Supreme Court to be able to say, oh, you know, this, this exists? You know, it, it should be something that we as a people should be able to say, no, let's take away capitalism and correct. This really horrible thing, and and this and this is within the black community, and then you have the Native American community. That's a whole different, um, huge episode, I'm sure. But that and, and until you until we correct these skeletons in our in our past, we um, are going to haunt us for a long time, and probably be our down uh, probably be our downfall. Mm. Um, it, 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 uh, you know, the, these are things that are never forgotten. Um, uh, there are some things that are never forgotten. And there are some things that are forgotten in our history, you know, as time goes away, the sting of it goes away. But I don't think this, these things are going to go away. Hmm. Oh, okay. uh, yes. No, so, um, yeah. So um, my, I, I illustrate that because my way of thinking of spending money as a congressman would be how do I build the foundation that's, that's destroyed in the United States? And, 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 you know, it's in, in, History it says that the more foundation, you, the stronger your foundation is, the more the top is going to benefit from it. So, so, uh, and a lot of times, uh, you as congressmen spend the time saying, "Oh, but we can't spend all the money on the foundation because the people at the top need it." Then they'll trickle down to you, right? Yeah. Which uh, we know is so wrong. It was just it's just buffoonery. Uh, so, so uh, uh, that's and that's you know you think it's common sense, but then again, um, well that. Yeah is what you and I have share in common. And that is what I think America say. We know that if you, if, if, uh, if you get almost people off the streets, um, the value of your house will go up because then when people come and buy your house, they're not gonna be scared away with people on the streets, right? It's very much related. 
if you, it's so, uh, and so people know this. So uh, that's, so in writing bills and, and trying to uh, uh, build strength within parties, that's what you, that's what you got to do. Um, just like me, I'm not interested in, 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 in the profit and how it's going to affect the big guys because they, they've, they've had their day. Yeah. Now, do you think that, uh, do you think that uh, in order to get, like I said, some, the loopholes that the big corporations do get, do you think that they should earn it by proving that their loopholes went to hiring and more benefits? Can you say that again? I said, Sorry. Could, no, no problem. Uh, I said, uh, do you think that the bigger corporations that get those tax loopholes, like they, they, uh, they take advantage of those at, like every year, uh, mm -hmm. they should uh, have to come forward and prove that they deserve to get those uh, by the rate of hiring and the rate of the, what the wages go up and based on benefits given. That's very open-minded of you. Um, <laughs> uh, very open-minded of you. Um, what I know and what they're going to show to me is that when you look at like companies like Walmart and one third of the employees of Walmart are getting uh, Medicaid and Medicare benefits because Walmart won't give full-time benefits. And one third of them are getting uh, subsidized housing. So pretty much you have Walmart with one third of its employees for 20, 30 years, uh, making billions of dollars just because they would hire people specifically who receive that kind of aid. And then we'd get a kickback and say, look at all the people we're hiring that are poor. Look how we're helping these people in the communities while never really met helping people at all rise up in the communities. That is the story of Walmart. That is the story of all large corporations. Um, so uh, whether or not they get loopholes uh, like that, when you speak about loopholes, I, I, I am a pessimist about that. <laughs> um, and there are Republicans and Democrats that will listen to arguments about that, but it won't come to me that way. Um, it, so um, I know the history, so do you. Um, uh, I've studied many things. Um, the retail industry came out and strong in 2003, 2004, and about how um, when big, big department stores plunked down in small communities like Walmart, um, they immediately absorbed 60% of the local independent community shops. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, 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 and all the city council people of these communities going, this is going to be a boom for employment, right? And Long Beach, they waived uh, two million dollars to uh, Walmart when they moved in in 2003, and uh, and construction fees uh, just to entice Walmart to to build downtown, a place downtown. Yeah. And then what? And then it, and then and then the city council turns up a word for business, word for right, and then all the local businesses got screwed. So um, I am for small business because you know I I. I uh, I like small businesses and, uh, well, uh, and let, let, let me let, let me rephrase that then uh, what I said plus uh, uh, those companies haven't if they like say Amazon when they go to any city it doesn't matter which one and they happen to uh, take away lots of jobs away from the overall community and force other places to uh, to shut down uh, I think in order for the for the state to uh, get that revenue back that other that other uh, business small businesses would would uh, generated that those pass through uh, corporations should pay more in taxes in regards to state taxes in order to give right. more comfort for like unemployment and, and uh, retraining and stuff of that nature. So would that be something that you would be looking into or? Uh, um, yeah, I want to back up for a second. I okay. I always. I, I'm a worker. I was in my mind, you know, I had rich friends. Mm -hmm. My parents were rich. Okay. Um, I went to college. The first one went to college. So I, I'm poor. Um, when I, I, I went to Amsterdam when I was 19 I, and, and, and someone told me that in Holland, um, from the time you're 18, that every year you crew a day or two of sick pay and vacation pay. Mm -hmm. And that vacation pay and sick pay follows you from job to job. Okay. So when, unlike America, United States, when we quit a job, and even we may accrue like more, the, the, how much we accrue in vacation sick pay may increase because we've been on the job for a while, and we lose that job, 
then we start back at zero. Yeah. At, at like, right. So, so um, when it comes to corporations, uh, they just they're just supplying the jobs to me, right? Mm -hmm. The lifestyle of you and me is, is what I, I I'm concerned about, right? So, um, um, giving helping them in any way, is, uh, I I very rarely see the benefit in that. Um, the idea that someone's going to move down to the road is like if you look at 1920s, 1930s union stuff, you know, the weavers and and you know, stunt, uh, grapes of wrath, that kind of stuff. Um, the, the the union breakers, they use that same argument, right? Uh, well, if you if we'll just pick up and move down the road, right? So so they'll say, well, we got to make it easier for them to be here. Uh, we're going to incentivize people to stay here. But the truth is that they, they that that if they pick up and move up down the road, well, there's another corporation on the opposite is just going to pick up and move down the road right in their place. Oh yeah, and and so, that's really so uh, so so think about that. Think think about think about a congressman for you that says, you know what, um, we should we should uh, reduce 40 hours a week as uh, down to 35, 36. We should have 20 dollars an hour minimum wage. We we should have a system. That, uh, that helps us retire. Um, that way, as we get older, follow. You know, you, you have to you have to uh, a employ older people, but also accept the things that come with them is that they need more time off and more vacation, more vacation pay. So, um, so then, 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 and I'm like, there, there's a society that I'm interested in living. Um, so, uh, uh, there's a whole there. I understand economics and I get way over my head very quickly and I'm sure most people do. And, and so we'll go after a certain, certain TP and talk about what about tax, tax, tax breaks. And, you know, it's this stuff, uh, and, and, and all this other stuff, but, but that, but that's the legislation I would, I would, I would, I would go for. Well, but, let, um, let me go, go ahead, back a little bit, if I may. Uh, yeah. The reason why I bring that kind of stuff up and then, and this kind of, in this type of conversation is because uh, I watched uh, the governor of Washington give Boeing. Uh, I don't in the billions of dollars in tax and in, in tax breaks, in order to uh, keep uh, in order to keep that manufacturer there uh, yeah. without any without any uh, um, uh, way of getting that money back in order to make it you know. Uh, Make it better for the people who who actually pay the taxes in Washington State. They oh, yeah, let's play this. Let, let's play game one, two, three. Knee jerk reaction to that, and I'll do my knee jerk reaction to that. One, two, three. Your knee jerk reaction to that. I was thinking they should put a loop, a uh, a thing in the contract saying if you if you go to another state, we get that uh, we get our money back. All right. So. All I hear is, is is the negotiations of billions of dollars between a corporation and a government, and and, and I'm like, you know, it's like a. All I think is like, we're talking about. I wish we were talking about that kind of big money, like that kind of big money in social programs. Well, yes, I know, I know. And the bus I, system, the train system. So so, uh, I'm, it's I'm, crazy I'm, that that's that's crazy. I'm like, uh, that that's the same story over and over again incentivize these companies uh, and, we, and we know well, that, that that the minute well, they sign the, if, the, if, they sign the if, dotted if, line they're jumping if, out if right you, if you put that kind of uh if you put that kind of term in the contract oh, and, and and if they they be less incentivized to move and two uh they might actually hire more because they would still continue to get that incentive i agree I yeah, agree so, with that. So, so I, agree. I totally yeah, agree with that. that I, that's that's where I was going with that. I'll just let you know. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. I, I I see it's it's really you know I I think I I think the biggest problem is is I think that what I'm trying to do most in, in now is talk more about what if I'm concerned about corporations and I'm not concerned about how a relationship with corporations. It's a uh, so you know what I mean? Yeah. There's my son. There's my son and my wife. Hello. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Hashtag real yeah, life, but... they, they, they tend, they, they tend to do that is like that the minute that they start to make enough money for themselves, they, they, they get out of town really quickly. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why people are bitter about corporations. Um, I, 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 I think that, uh, the way that we, I want to talk about things more is, is, is kind of like, you know, go back to the idea that I, what is it that you would dream to see within your lifetime? And, and, and before you die, what would you want to see end? 
Um, what are you tired of, uh, of seeing? Like, you know, imagine being 90 years old and, and, and a woman and, and hear that Roe v. Wade's getting overturned uh, over, uh, and you're like, oh my God, I, I've been, oh my God, 70 years we've been arguing over this. Can we just get over the fact that and get in progress? progress? Yeah. And, and being 90 years old and, and dying without ever seeing that resolve. Right. Um, there are things that I think we, we should think about is about, well, what is it that we want to really resolve? What is it that we want to do? And then, and then the cap capitalism will just be in our way. Government will just be in our way. We got to go for it. Well, wasn't that, uh, based on a religious thing? I thought, what? I thought, uh, Roe versus Wade. Um, was that, I, I can't, I, I don't know. Roe v. Wade about... is, 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 the, is, is the last uh, 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 decision by the court that, um, that made, wasn't that it made abortion illegal, it made uh, illegal, it made, it made treatment illegal. Um, don't oh, yeah, no, Roe v. Yeah. Wade. Uh, I picked a bad subject because I don't know much about Roe v. Wade, but I'm just <laughs> saying that there are, there are, there are a lot of people out there who, like me with homelessness, and a lot of people out there that have spent their life seeing a problem, they work toward that problem and never see an end to it. And you're just stuck in uh, negotiation. So so from that kind of thinking, like Black Lives Matter, I'm sure everybody's just like, really, can we just not, can we just get in, live in a nation where people are just not that dumb to be racist? Can we, right? Um, that, yeah, that that that's all training as far as that part goes. That's they're 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 trained. People like that are trained to do that by by their <sighs> uh, by relatives by mm -hmm. depending on their you know yeah. That's know, that that that's why yeah, anyway. I I myself I, right. I would, me and my sister are the only two white kids in the whole family. The rest are African American or uh, in between. Do, so do, do you know about Kwame? You, I'm sure you heard of Kwame Ture. Um, I think so. Uh, and he was in, uh, he was, um, his, his birth name was, um, um, was, oh, people are going to hate me if they see this. Uh, anyways, uh, Kwame Ture is, uh, I know, and he, he, uh, he was, uh, he was, uh, I believe he was a member of Black, of Black Panthers. Oh, he, okay. uh, um, um, Carmichael, Carmichael. Anyways, uh, it'll come to me. So he makes the argument. Uh, he makes the argument that um, capitalism is the only is the thing that gives power to racism and sexism in our nation. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I'm, I follow the the teachings of the Compassion of Buddha because I don't want to be uh, angry, <laughs> non-smiling person. So yeah. I, I live, I try to have forgiveness and be at peace with the world. And so I, and so it's not that I accept people as being ugly and let them be ugly. It's just that. Um, I realize where the power lies, and that is with capitalism. With hiring, you know, we can go on and on about them. We we know that's true. Yeah. So, um, and the power to lynch people for him is now the 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 power to kneel, kneel on someone's back in broad daylight, being recorded, and and uh, and put a uh, that life to death. It, it it was it's regular practice across America. These kind of uh, um, brutal arrest uh practices and and uh i i know because i i helped uh, develop the crisis intervention training here in humboldt county which was the police department and such with mental health and, and how to de-escalate things and you watch these things and people who were uh, first responders in the streets uh and you see them immediately escalate things and use that escalation to uh brutalize people the only reason that they're allowed to do that is because of corporations um, a is because um, it's on the news and it makes a lot of money. Um, uh, and also it's because capitalism wants to sell houses. And so the and so uh, brutal police departments exist at the benefit of real estate agents and such because that lowers crimes. Um, it, it, it's, it's better to you know invest money in brutality than it is through social programs. And that's all money. So capitalism is what is part of life as we accept it as modern modern uh, um, racism. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, does that mean that you're willing to uh, uh, take some money as a police force and put into more uh, mental health uh, mental health services? Uh, you know, have have uh, counselors and all that on the standby 
for those, for those kind of right. problems. Remember, 12 years ago, they cut all the non-military uh, programs. Turn, turn, turn those programs, fundings back on. Um, and, you know, there are great programs and they've all been defunded. Again, go back to, uh, to back to that is that do we really want to be the cowboys rewrite the legislation and go through that or do we or should we look back at why where's all our money going. It's going to military programs It's going to oil um, and it has been going at that at an accelerated rate since uh, 2010. Done, and that was and that was accomplished by the uh, Obama uh, Biden administration. Mm -hmm. and so now, and now um, Biden's in. Yeah. So when it comes to why we need uh, more military on the streets is because um, they turn the faucets off the community programs. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was when I was getting uh, my master's degree, uh, I we gotta go soon. I I, I okay. had to do an internship, and not just thing for you. I was doing an internship yeah. in part, and so I did five hundred hours. Um, in, in this in this program, I won't get into it much. I don't bore people, but um, I had to learn how to do macro social work. So I attended a consortium once a month, which was called the 68 Percenters, because huh. in the year 1997, 68 percent of crime was been, was being committed by the by people between the age of nine and 15. Um, and this was in certain communities. And what and what had happened was, you know, the boy the boys and girls club, which is an extension of police, was there. There, there were all these communities because we saw the spike and specifically between the kids between 9 and 15, what was happening is, is that libraries got us funding. So after school programs for that got cut. Uh, the after school programs at, at the Long Beach Unified School District got cut. And so um, you had all these uh, people who work, who have jobs, who relied on these programs um, to kind of keep their kids occupied. And so um, you had these kids going out and just screwing around and they became furtive to larger crimes and the police didn't know how to handle these kids and they thought oh they you know you know i used furtive because you know, if there was white kids they would have just said oh you know i did that when i was a kid as well but they they used arrests for that and so um they were like well how, how are we going to stop arresting these kids between 9 and 15. so there you have again um funding uh that got cut and immediately uh led to arrests and uh and jail time for uh, people, you know, communities of color, um, and, and it's all capitalism. So, so you gotta, you gotta look at. Look, you, we know this turned the funding back on for these social programs. The side of the police, you can do whatever you want. What I want to do is, I want to, you know, have psychiatric care. You know, I want to have, you know, turn all these funds that we know works and good. And then, if you fund everything, just watch, you know, a bunch of police officers getting laid off because there's nothing to do. Mm. That's my. That's the world I believe in. Mm. So um, uh, I, 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 I'm again, um, and being an inventor is not the thing. It's just to see that um, uh, again and again, if, if you look at a, if you look at a city that's swirling the drain economically, uh, like the monorail or, or you know, uh, uh, the you know, the Music Man coming into town, they 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 sell they they sell you know development to them. Mm -hmm. And then they're like development and, and, and gentrification will save your, uh, uh, your town from swirling the drain. And again and again, they do that and it, it screws over people and the, and the developers come in they, and then, and then uh, uh, you have these uh, buildings that people can't afford. It has an effect on the, rent, the surrounding rents. And, and so to address these kind of issues, they send brute cops, they send in developers while they're draining all the social programs. Why are they draining the social programs? Well, since 2010, it's because of the banks, you know, screwed up. And then they just, uh, you know, non-military expenditures across the board just got cut. Yeah. That's, that, that's what's going on in America right now. That is what's going on in America right now. Well, then also there's mass amounts of strikes going on too, in regards to like, um, I think I heard uh, the, fire, the fire department in New York uh, was going on strike or about to go on strike. Uh, police department, uh, now they, very small amount, but still about 34 people that I'm aware of are about to Good. go strike. Yeah, uh, over all, all because of the uh, the COVID mandate, the, the vaccine mandate. You know, one one. You know, we're we're, we're of course torn on this. I, I love the Weavers. I love uh, Bob Dylan. I I love unions and power of the people. But then you look at this kind of stuff and you think automatically stupidity, right? Um, it, it's it's really hard because uh, it, that's just my opinion. Because I, I have to be open minded. I, I of course got the vaccine. I really think people should get the vaccine. Um, it's what's on hand. You got to be safe. Um, uh, yeah. I, but I, why? But why has come a political movement? 
is is probably for nefarious reasons, but I don't like to play around with it. Um, I think we should seize the opportunity for this and say, hey, okay, Medicare for all. You really want to do, you don't, you don't want to wear a mask, right? you don't want a vaccine, Medicare for all. Um, then, and that's really, that's, that's really, and then we'll go back to our lives because people are scared. Look, we, we are precariously placed economically, the bottom third of us. A good, med a good bill, medical bill like this, if it doesn't kill us, um, the, a $10,000, $20,000 medical bill is going to screw, screw us up for the next five years. Mm -hmm. Uh, isn't that even, and so, uh, yeah, there's like what, two, 3% death rate, you know, bless their souls, but there's also, you know, I think like 40% get really horrible symptoms and, and they go on for a long time. So, um, that that's almost as much as of a curse as, as they get sick and, and, and it's like, people are like not wearing a mask or like, you know, I could use Medicare for all that. That's a real treatment to this pandemic. Because that's the that's where the real that's where real harm is happening, and no one's doing anything about it. It's on the plate. People want it. The the polls want Medicare for all. So that, so so when these people talk about masks, and they go, yeah, you know, I don't want to talk about masks. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about Medicare for all. I want to talk about what the real harm is going on to this country because of this pandemic, because all these bills and how the insurance companies are going to make tons of money, right? And how Pfizer and Moderna are making huge profits. Well, Medicare for all. Let's cover this stuff. Oh, no, the only reason, and the only reason it's not happening is corporations. Mm -hmm. It's obvious and all that, yeah. I mean, uh, are, are you, uh, as far as uh, the vaccine goes, are you uh, pro-choice in regards to that? Like uh, people, can, people should be able to choose whether they get it or not? That's the thing about ethics is you can't, you can't just put them down for hard, hard, confusing times or times when, when it benefits you. I believe in ethics. And, 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 to some, and, and, it, and it really upsets me. And, and, and this is the last place people should be drawing the line in the sand <laughs> but ethically speaking yeah we have to we have to let the we, we have to have people make that decision hmm. we have to we have to negotiate with them as much as possible to try to come to a, a with a sane decision that 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 we don't because you know it's like you, you know you we've seen it time and time again you one thing like this we make an exception and then people start making rules out of that exception mm -hmm. right uh, no, 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 yeah. no that, that that's true. But at the same time, uh, I think uh, I think putting the mandate on uh, on uh, companies uh, with a hundred people or more by I think it's January fourth. Uh, I think that itself is kind of anti uh, anti choice, or yeah, yeah, because that's preventing people who don't want to do it uh, from being able to go and actually do jobs. So yeah, I mean, we we I mean you and I would have to find the find the reason that why it's legally uh, okay for a company to get a TB test before you start a job, right? Mm -hmm. um, and be able to you know of course uh, you want to look at the um, precedents of it. So why yeah, is yeah. it that we're allowed to have all well, these vaccines? And then you would find the reasoning of why we can do all, we can do the things people want. That that that's actually funny that you bring that part up because I remember. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Biden was going and saying there's a president for this. Now I looked into it. The president was for states, it, for, for, for state governments, not for federal government. So the state government has the, has the lawful ability to do that, not the federal government. There's, and that's the law. So you follow, you, you follow the law. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that yeah. is the president, but he's not following mm -hmm. that portion. He's just putting, he's, putting his spin on it so right so um you have you know there these are very this is a divided issue this is a good get us you know it's like there are really people surprise me but people are very heated about this of course oh well, um, yeah and, yeah and, and so and so i don't like to play around with talking about it because um um it's just madness yeah yeah i right? think that's, i think that's probably that, that's probably why i'm pretty much pro choice and everything pretty much so uh, yeah that, um, that, again uh, like this is again run, my third time running, and and after and and so it's it's not me trying to be rude, but I keep on trying to like say how do you take the stuff that they're talking about, which I'm not really interested in, and turn it into really what you want to talk about. So and and the thing is is that you want you want to talk about mass and vaccine, let's talk about Medicare for all, let's talk about health insurance, let's talk yeah. about what's really the long lasting effect of this health, and and like if 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 you if you want to make a case for Medicare for all, 
find the worst case scenario of Medicare for why that you would say why we would need Medicare for all. And I would ask, is it any worse than what we're going through right now? Well, none of that, but you can also put down and say that it's deflationary because it costs less to do. And a lot yes. of a lot of right wingers and all of them are are concerned with deficit uh, with the deficit spending and inflation. Well, then the Medicare for all uh, should be is has been proven to be deflationary and not inflationary. Well, that's the thing is every time you scratch beneath the surface on these issues, you realize that it, that um, they were wrong. Actually, it's better economically to do these more sensible things, and you wonder why it is that we're not doing these um, more sensible things. But you know, um, again, you know, um, I don't know how, my, how much my wife wants to talk to me talk oh. about it, but she, my wife has type one diabetes, and so you know, you have to use test strips cost money, um, glucometers cost money, um, mm -hmm. insulin usually is covered by it. But you know, a lot of people are are like living paycheck to paycheck, and they still have to pay for glucometers and test strips, and that just sucks. Mm, um, yeah. So, but that, but, but then that the only, and you think you know, test strips are these little tiny papers that you put, you know, your, your blood and yeah, yeah. And put somewhere. So yeah, I mean, little tiny that, test yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're like, 50, they're like 50 cents a piece. Mm. Um, right. Uh, and like, it's like, a, and it's just crazy. So, but, and it comes down to, it's not the reason always is, is profit. So well, medical insurance is profit. And, uh, and that's what it is. Yeah. Well, um, I, I I should probably let you go because <laughs> I don't want to no. uh, uh, keep you. They just closing longer. the door. Okay. I'll give you want to do. You're ready to go. I'll give you one more topic. I, I don't want to bore. Okay. Yeah. No, no. 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 Go ahead. Uh, I, uh, no, it's your choice. It's your interview. It's your please. show. <laughs> no, please uh, go ahead. Yeah, it, you know, the 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 big the big chunks of running a campaign. Uh, you know, it's there's always you got you got to focus on the big chunks, and people want to get you into the nuance, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the the big the big chunks for me again and again are you know raising social security checks, mm -hmm. raising <laughs> checks for disability people that are poor, right? Uh, and the other check is what the other big chunk is as people talk about oil, right? Yeah. Everyone's anti oil. Everybody, uh, a very wise person who's very famous said to me once, you know. No one hears negative. You, you, they, they hear positive. So, so your message. So, if, if you want the end of oil, the end of cars, you want the end of carbon. You know, you, those, those are negative words. So, really, I'm pro public transportation. Um, as far as dividing up the resources that we have of oil, carbon that creates carbon, instead of you know, if if, you, if you're portioning it out, you know, to run a car that. When it, if you portion out to buses and trains, you get more people transported, right? Yeah. And so, so even 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 if we don't have this great huge uh, 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 revolution, sci scientifically creating energy through nuclear power, some Tesla thing, whatever it is, that's going to get us out of this carbon uh, thing. But public transportation is the way to go, man. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I really, you know, I know. It sucks because Biden is Mr. Public Transportation, and I, as, as I hear, you know, take a train, man. I don't know what is another Biden, but yeah. you know, it's like the Amtrak. Been to uh, Europe, he's big on Amtrak. You know, I've, I've, if you if you go to Europe, uh, they they the the Euro uh, the Euro trains are just beautiful. Uh, half of the experience of going from A to B is during the, is between A and B, right? Yeah, yeah. It's and and you know, but they and they force. And of course, there's billions of dollars, or trillion dollars they put in these systems. But but that is that is how you get people to run a, run one way. I think more to acting in a in a way that that will transcend us from cars and, and stuff like that. We we know inherently is wrong. Yeah. Um, it, it'll better society. So really, um, people must think, oh, it's low hanging fruit. Like I I think public transportation should be free. Yeah. Public transportation should be absolutely free. It's like a, it's like start that way. You know, because eventually it's just like Medicare for all. We're going to get there. Public transportation is free. Well, it, it, public transportation is pretty awesome. Uh, didn't, it start, uh, didn't it start off as a free service uh, by, the, by the state or by the uh, city? When? How far back do you want to go? <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, I mean, because in Seattle, uh, I was first learning about Metro. And I was uh -huh. told at the time, anyway, uh, that at first the service was free. But once it became privatized, or yeah. partially privatized. That's when they started to uh, raise rates and all that stuff. Oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah. yeah um, 
I think that was, I think that was parts to do supposedly to pay for other uh, projects, but uh, that was never clearly defined to me. So having having a good transportation system just to, uh, when, when you think about it, it makes sense, mm -hmm. and and people should people should think more and more about um, Eisenhower. And that in the 1950s, right after all this, the red cars are taken away, all the public, like what you said, when the private companies shelved all the public transportation and trains, um, and there was congestion because there were no highways and there were stop signs and everywhere, the Eisenhower, it, there are these great documentaries that Eisenhower made uh, uh, about, uh, about his uh, infrastructure bill in the 1950s. I think it was $200 billion that built all the freeways, mm. right? All the major highways yeah and so that, that was eisen that came from all of eisenhower all these uh inter interstate highways um, and so what it did was is that for 60 years it mean we had these great highways where there are no stop signs no lights you could go you know, travel drive through almost all two or three states and never stop mm -hmm. so now all that stuff's falling apart mm. and where and if you look at the motivation for those highways it was because eisenhower and the oil and you know uh and the standard oil and these companies that we as a nation are going to drive cars in the next 60 years. Now we have to reassess where we are. Are we going to rebuild all the roads and then say, oh, we are, we are, uh, we are obligating that our next two generations are just going to drive cars Yeah. Uh, because if we pour all the money, in, in, which is the infrastructure bill, or should we just say, hey, wait, wait, we're looking at what we're going to build over the next 60 years. And people should be talking about that more. It's like, what, 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 what does the next generation want? You know, all this people who are in 40s, 50s, wouldn't want to keep on driving our cars because we grew up that way. But what about the kids that are 12, 10 or 20 years old? Do they want to be driving cars? Mm -hmm. Right. Or do they want to be on really super cool trains? Yeah. So, so that having that future is why I think is why I'm uniquely green is that it's almost like George Jetson's is where it's like where, where, where our time has come is people are trying to say, hey, you know, we have to make a fundamental shift. And what is that fundamental shift? Do we rebuild all the highways, you know, through uh, Eisenhower 2.0, yeah. Joe Biden? Mm -hmm. Or do we rebuild our Amtrak system? Do, do we rebuild all the community systems to, to have a good system for uh, um, the daily work commutes? 80% mm -hmm. of the car, according to the National Transportation Safety Board, 80% of the use of a car is used to, to uh, commute to a job. Mm. Of the remaining 20%, National Transportation Safety Board, I've memorized this, under, the remaining 20% uh, that you got of what car ownership, 14% is used within a two-mile radius of going around and, to, and doing routine stuff, right? Only... The six percent that's left over is the freedom of the car, mm. of getting on the highway, going on big trips. So if we had a transportation work system that replaced the commute and also replaced getting around town, that would be uh, that you're looking at uh, ninety four percent of use of cars. Mm. Well, uh, on that note, uh, <laughs> um, where can people donate oh. to, to your campaign? Uh, vote for Hank D O T E, of course. Not a vote for Hank. That was my last one. Vote for. That was when I ran for mayor. Whew. Mm. Hank for Senate, H E N K, the number four, and Senate, S, mm. as you know. So, uh, uh, Calvin, it's, I, I, hope, I, hope, I hope today was, I'm sure today was not as doing la as last time. I hope it was did okay. No, either way, it was fun. I, 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 I liked the conversation we had, the uh, details involved in it, and yeah. Um, I, are you planning on doing any uh, advertisements of any kind? Because uh, I I don't mind actually uh, putting them up along with my stuff, no matter who uh, or what I'm doing as far as the park goes. In about two or three months, I think if I'm in the race, then mm -hmm. uh, I can start spending money and doing that way. Until now, it's just getting, like you said, getting donations just so I can raise the roughly just under three thousand dollars to uh, file the to do file the papers. Uh, and be on the ballot that's just like you know where i want to be right okay. um, um but yeah um if you want to interview me again uh, it's just you know it's just getting out there being the, part of the debate is really exciting for me to be able to talk about these things yeah that i think uh needs to be talked about and um and you know i'll try i'll try really really hard to learn mmt i'll try really really hard well, that, I think that would uh, help as far as the uh, answers uh, to if somebody asks you uh, how you spend, uh, uh, how you pay for it, that sort of thing. And also looking into uh, how the state spends their money and stuff of that nature, because 
if you uh, if you do get uh, uh, voted in, uh, then you'll you'd have to look at what how to but how the how your state vote, uh, state spends that money in order to be able to get money allocated to your state. So that's, that's, right. So that's, so that's kind of that's how a I'm whole whole different discussion about what well, exactly. are the resources, yes. California resources and how we haven't even started talking about water. We're living in California. That should be the number one thing we're talking about when it comes to the what is the future of California and it's going to come to water and uh and you know i've watched so many documentaries i've been reading so much about the for over 10 years it just keeps on coming up the issue right. of water and and that's got to be the that's that's the that is going to be how we how we in california either you know it's the demise of us or and how we're going to get out of yeah. all of our bad times well, uh, we should uh, uh, schedule there another, you go. another Until talk. Until next time. Yeah, yes. We'll talk so, about MMT and water. Yes. And uh, one more time, where can people donate to you? Uh, Hank for Senate, H-E-N-K, uh, number four, and Senate. My last name is the abbreviation of Connecticut, C-O-N-N. -N. Okay. So know, my, my real name is James Kahn. Only, and every time I, every, if you type in James Kahn, C-O-N-N. You get the actor, yeah. Yeah, the actor and it actually says are you sure you don't want this? I'm like no i want james Conn. It's like no 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 we're searching i'm like no i just he spells his last name c double a n yes well you're I, I have met james oh double n no there you go i i, I met james Conn. he's a pretty funny guy but i don't that's know that uh yeah he's <laughs> well, actually uh, funnier uh, than, than he is scarier yeah anyways i'll, well, I'll, I'll uh, talk, uh, that, thanks for being on yeah thank you uh, yeah, thanks for being on, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again uh, maybe next week or maybe a week or two after that. That would be awesome. Uh, have okay. a good night. Uh, th thanks All for right. being on. Okay, bye now. Bye.